Hi everyone, it's Emma here and this week I'm talking through eight things that can happen after stopping birth control. So this topic is quite close to my heart and um, I've had experience in this and I just feel it's really important to help spread the word and just help women to understand a little bit more about their hormones and also how diet and lifestyle strategies can come in to support us um, in the best way that we can. So I'm just going to talk through some things that can change um, if we've been on birth control for some time and then come off, what we can expect and a little bit about um, potentially what we can do to help manage those symptoms. Um, so the first um, point on my list is irregular periods. So it's quite common after coming off birth control to experience some irregular periods and that can actually last for some time. Also depending on the method of birth control and how long you've been on it and, and so on. So it is normal. I can't always say for sure how long it should last and um, that'd be something to discuss with your doctor but it is just um, important to note that it is actually quite common and something to expect and this is just as our own natural balance of hormones start to readjust and start to get into their own natural rhythm again their own monthly rhythm which your birth control has been purposely um influencing for some time and um, so as i say this is this is quite um common and hopefully after some time it should start to settle back into your own natural rhythm. Number two is heavier than normal periods. So again this kind of goes hand in hand with the first point in that it can take a little bit of time for your hormones to rebalance and in some cases that could possibly give rise to heavier periods for some time. Now it's also important to know that it's um an interesting one to consider what your periods were like before going on birth control because in some cases we're put on birth control not just for the contraceptive benefits but also in some cases to try and manage some of the symptoms that perhaps we had been struggling with so some symptoms of PMS, monthly symptoms for example. Now if we are then to come off back off the birth control if that underlying issue is still there be it because of a natural kind of hormone imbalance then in some cases the symptoms that we experienced before we might start to experience again. So in that case we would be wanting to try and decipher why we might be experiencing these symptoms and what perhaps we could do about it. So in, ca in the case of PMS for example if we were experiencing quite heavy kind of painful periods, some bloating, tender breasts, irritability, some of those key symptoms of PMS and we wanted to try and balance our hormones a little more naturally, then that's where something like Agnes Castus could potentially come in um, and help to manage those symptoms uh, a little bit better going forward. Um, you shouldn't take the Agnes Castus at the same time as hormonal contraceptive, so only if you actually had come off it. Um, you should take it every day of your cycle and also you should take it for up to three months for best effects as well. Because it's a herb, it's a little bit more gentle, so it does take a little bit longer um, to work for best effects. Number three is you start ovulating. Um, so the most hormonal contraceptives stop us ovulating, that's how they work. So when you come off it, it's often the case that you will start ovulating again. So for some women, this hasn't been a phenomenon they've been used to for some time. So you might notice some symptoms just as, um, such as some mid-cycle twinges, some slight pain near the hip area, uh, changes in cervical mucus. You might notice some symptoms like that and that could indicate that you're ovulating. My next point is that that um, obviously makes you um, able to fall pregnant. So that's again just something to consider obviously when you're coming off. That may have been the intention for coming off or perhaps you just wanted to give your body a little bit of a break. Um, but either way, if you're ovulating then you are there is a chance that you could potentially fall pregnant. On that note as well, number five, you might notice is might notice some changes in your libido. And this is all again linked to your hormones. Um, these a lot of these symptoms are governed by your hormones, and um, so it is natural to get fluctuations in these symptoms throughout the month. Um, and that's the key, it's fluctuations. So 
For some women, they might notice their own libido um, increases around the time of ovulation, and that's quite a natural um, response. Um, but it's just interesting to notice the, the changes in some of your symptoms, which you might not have noticed um, such a difference in while you were just on a steady dose of the hormonal contraceptives. Um, number six is the, the change in discharge as well, which can go hand in hand with libido. So cervical mucus changes throughout the month as we become fertile and things. Um, obviously, if there's any changes that you're worried about or anything seems unusual, then it's time to go to your doctor just to have to have a check. But in most cases, um, the pill, the sorry, the pill helps to keep things quite regular. So your symptoms might not fluctuate just as much. Whereas when we come off our our natural balance of hormones are much more prone to fluctuations throughout the month. Number seven is spots. Um, so again, this can crop up as a result of fluctuating hormones. In the second half of our cycle, as estrogen levels drop off in the lead up to our period, estrogen is very good for helping to maintain our skin, keep it quite lubricated, quite plump. So as estrogen levels drop off, um, sometimes our skin can become a little bit more susceptible um, to spots. Um, again, some in some cases, this is why women went on the pill or something similar in the first place to help manage their symptoms. But it just goes back to that if you had symptoms before going on the pill, then um, in some cases after coming off, it, some of those symptoms could crop up again. So again, that goes back to if you've come off the pill, but you're keen to manage your symptoms more naturally, is trying to get to the root cause um, of what might be happening. So as I said, skin issues can and sometimes flare up as a result of hormone imbalance. In some cases, this would be something like the Agnes Cassis, which could help um, if you were thought to be high estrogen and that drop in estrogen seems to be making things worse. In other cases, skin issues can, in some cases, be more linked to low estrogen type. So me, myself, I know I'm a low estrogen type. So my cycle seems to be a bit longer um, than, your, than your average 28 days. Um, so you can potentially be more prone to skin issues for that reason. But of course, there are other herbal remedies which can help with that, such as your fermented soy isoflavones. Um, other issues with spots, in some cases spots can be linked to quite weak digestion um, so sometimes digestion can benefit from a little bit of work and then of course there are some key nutrients as well which help to maintain the health and integrity of our skin, um, magnesium, zinc, vitamin D, vitamin A is very nice for keeping things uh, nice and tamed. Many of these nutrients can be found in something like our balanced mineral drink for example just a nice little daily top up of your nutrients including your vitamin d which we are now recommended to take a supplement and we might struggle to get enough of from the sun and um, so it's just something to consider if you are struggling with your skin but of course we're also here to help at the able go helpline if you want to talk about that a little bit more in detail finally we have mood swings as well so this is quite characteristic of pms as well Again, potentially your Agnes Cassis could help if you suspected an underlying hormone imbalance. And just as I've said that if the, it was a pre-existing um, condition or issue, then it might crop back up as well. Um, just thinking back to the nutrients that I mentioned as well, it's really interesting that um, in some cases, the pill can actually make us more at risk of nutrient deficiencies. And there's actually research um, to back that theory up, which I can tag in the description. Um, in terms of mood swings, hopefully um, people notice an improvement as during whilst taking the pill. Sometimes mood swings can be an issue as well. So it's just really important to help track your symptoms. Um, and if we can really understand your symptoms when they're cropping up, we can hopefully have a better shot at managing them. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Um, please do subscribe to our AVOGO channel and also hit the little bell icon which means you'll be notified when I do any new videos.